Hey guys, welcome back to part 2 of our NetBeans tutorial and today I'll be showing you how to get started with a little bit of Java programming and also how to start using these items on the right hand side. So the first thing we need to do is change the layout of our JFrame. So right click on our JFrame, go down to set layout and choose absolute layout. Compile and build it and run and you can see it resizes itself and so it's extremely small but we'll fix that a little bit later on but for now we're going to get started with a label so all you have to do is drag and drop it which is the core function of NetBeans left click it, drag it into your JFrame and position it anywhere you want now you can see it named itself JLabel1 and the more of these we add basically all that happens is it changes the number at the end of it so I'm going to get started with JLabel1 and you can see we have little squares around the edge of our label and this is to resize it and we can resize it in any dimension as you can see I'm just going to start off with the default again and expand it to about that much and I'm going to change text now since it's a Valentine's Day application I'm going to make it a guess what application okay now basically let me just explain what we are doing here our text says guess what now we're going to have a field where the person actually has to guess and a button that will basically run the entire thing and usually when someone says guess what you don't actually guess you usually just say what and that's the same concept here that your answer will be what and anything else you enter will produce an error message so now that we have this text in place we can actually change the properties all we have to do is right click on the text go down to properties and you can see we have a similar dialog compared to the JFrame that we edited in the last tutorial now we can change the background color the font and I'm going to change the font to Comic Sans because everyone hates that and put this out to 12 click OK and you can see our text changed it did make it a little bit bigger since we did change the size you can also change the color and all you have to do is go to foreground, currently it's black we're going to click on these three dots on the right hand side and change it to a pinkish color, purple and close that the next tutorial will be showing you how to add a background and actually create a custom text so you won't actually need a label but just for the purpose of the tutorial uh, we'll be showing you how to do certain things now we also need a text field where <coughs> where the user will enter the answer so here's a text field right here once again drag and drop and you can see that it renamed itself to jtextField1 now pretty much everything will automatically rename itself jtextField2 just like how it worked with the labels now if we compile and build and then run our project you can see it says jtextField1 in here which is exactly what NetBeans automatically gave us. Now we can actually backspace this and type in whatever we want. But whenever we run the program, it's always going to start up with JTextField1. So we're going to edit the text. Once again, right click it, and the first option says Edit Text. Click on that, and we're going to backspace it so it says nothing. Now when you compile and build and then run a project, you can see it has nothing in the text field. Now you can still see that it's the size is a bit messed up, it's not what it shows here and once again if you compare with the design view you can see it's completely different in these two aspects like the size and stuff is the same but the theme you can see isn't the same this one here is a little bit more lighter this one here has a border on it but we'll fix that as soon as we're done with our actual code now we want to add a button which is right next to the label it's the OK button drag and drop and it renamed itself to JButton1 once again right click edit text and we're going to change this to guess and center this as best as we can this is obviously not perfect you guys can work on it a bit more but that looks okay now we're going to change the variable name because when you're working with 10 of these buttons it's going to be hard to keep track when you're busy coding which button does what so all we have to do is right click change variable name and we're going to name this to guess button click OK and we're going to do the same thing with the text field right click change variable name and we're going to add it as guess field 
So now to get to the coding part of this, we have to first do a little bit of thinking what our program is going to do and what it actually has to do. So now basically has a question and the answer that the user is going to type is going to be in this text field and once they type in the answer they're going to click this button that says guess and as soon as they click the button the code will run and check what is in this field and if it's correct it'll show up a dialog saying you know whatever message that you want to put in there and if it's incorrect it'll say guess again or this is not correct so to get into the uh, source code view we're going to double click on our main variable which is our button so just double click on our button left mouse click and it automatically brings up the spot here and I'm just going to delete that now you can see it says private void guess button action performed now guess button is the button that we actually renamed the variable to and it says action performed and basically whatever you type in here will be the action that it performs so guess button action performed pretty self-explanatory now I'm going to type out a piece of code and I'll explain it as soon as I'm done okay now that I'm done I'm going to explain the code really quickly and basically it does exactly what we said we wanted it to do so if the word is correct in here it'll display a message if it's incorrect it will display another message saying that this is wrong so what we have to do is we have to check what is in this text field and it has to match what we specify so the word that we specified is what and you can see that in the orange text basically we in NetBeans whenever you find a string it will be highlighted in orange now we have to get the text out of this uh, field right here and the function to that is called whatever the field name is and we renamed our field name to guess field and then it's dot get text with an open close bracket and that will fetch whatever text is in there and then check if it is equals to what we specified, the word that we specified, which is what. And you can see I added on ignore case. Now this will ignore whatever case the person types it in, uppercase or lowercase. And uppercase is capitals, lowercase is uh, small letters. So they can type it any which way they want and it will always read it as the correct word. Now I'm going to add a message dialog which will pop up when we enter the correct uh, correct word and that means automatically filled in for me now we're going to type in whatever message we want okay and remember to always put a semicolon at the end you might find that you'll get an error and I'll show you why that is an error that looks exactly like this now this is because you have not imported the class for J option planes. So you can see it shows up a little light bulb here. You have to just left click it once and it says add import. And you're going to click that, but it magically added the import, and now you have no more errors. Now we're going to compile, run, and now if we enter any random thing in there, you can see nothing happens because we haven't accounted for that yet. But as soon as we enter the word what, it'll give us our short message. We can also type it in a weird style way and once again it works now we're going to add code in case they enter the wrong thing now obviously we aren't going to account for every word in the whole dictionary so Java has a function for that it's called else if and else so if it is equal to this word here then it'll run this portion of the code if it's equal to anything else but what we specified here then it'll run this piece of code which we'll specify now all we're going to do is copy and paste this message and change the actual string part and we're going to say yes again your answer was incorrect okay compile and build and run it okay now if you enter some random thing it'll give us our second message guess again your answer was incorrect if we enter the correct thing gives a different message. Now obviously you can have a lot longer message than this I'm just doing it for the purpose of the tutorial I don't want to take up 30 minutes and now you notice that our theme looks a bit weird it's not the typical Windows 7 style and if you like this theme obviously you can stick with it if you don't I'll show you how to change it right now basically there's tabs on the top right here 
and usually when we're working we work in design view and you can see that this button here is pushed in which is the design button now we have two other buttons the source button and the history button the history button I honestly never use you might find a use for that and the source code button is another common thing that you will always be using so if you click on the source button you can see we are taken to the same place where we typed in our code just recently and if we scroll a little bit more down we have this box that says look and feel settings code all we have to do is expand this by clicking the plus on the left hand side and here we go now as I mentioned before all strings will appear in orange now here's this if statement and we find this orange where it says Nimbus now Nimbus is a look and feel and we're going to change this to Windows there's a few more different styles but you can look on the NetBeans forums for that and compile and build and then run it and you can see we're back to our Windows 7 style buttons and once again if you enter nothing in there it says guess again you can add another thing that's if, if it detects nothing in the field it says please enter something uh, but I'll show you to do that in maybe the next tutorial if we have extra time so now as you can see our window looks good over here but when you run it it's not it's not resized properly so all we have to do is create a label to uh, make this frame fit into place so drag and drop a label on the top left hand side and resize it so it fills the entire window if it goes over it doesn't really matter Hit the text and remove all the text now it looks just like how we started except when we run it it fits all nicely and everything works as it should so now in the next tutorial we will teach you how to change this coffee cup icon and also we will show you how to create an icon at the bottom you can see right now it's a coffee cup but we will change that to maybe something like a heart or whatever it may be we will also show you how to add a background the quick and easy way and it should only take you about 10 seconds to do that our text also will be changed um, within Photoshop so we don't actually have to use a label anymore we can create any fancy text that we want and also we will teach you how to create a custom text field so we can have different types of styles maybe rounded edges as well as doing the same thing with the buttons so once again thanks for watching